Hey, how's it going? This is PK, Pastor Kevin, coming at you on Tuesday, October the 5th, 2021. Good to have you in this video. If you're a subscriber, I appreciate you so much. You're my VIP. You're awesome. I apologize for not making a video last week. I wanted to make a video around October the 1st, 2nd or 3rd, but I had multiple vehicle problems. I was getting my vehicle worked on, flat tire fixed, and other things to be worked on. So here we are, good to have you here. I wanna to talk today about the new documentary movie, The Jesus Music Movie. It came out at the beginning of October, and you may have heard about it, you may have seen um, uh, advertisements on Facebook or social media. Basically, the Jesus Music documentary movie is a documentary about the history of the movement of contemporary Christian music. So it goes all the way back, it's almost two hours long, it goes all the way back to the hippies and the Jesus movement hippies who were instrumental in getting young people back in those days, uh, the 1960s and 70s, they got the young people in, interested in praising Jesus and uh, singing songs to Jesus. Uh, they were kind of a, a countercultural movement at the time. They weren't interested so much in the organized, established churches. They weren't uh, uh, interested in the mainline uh, services and hymns, but they were bringing in a new flavor, a new style of Christian music. At that time, there was no... Um, Matt Redman, Chris Tomlin, Newsboys. So the hippies that made up the Jesus movement in the 60s and 70s, that was all brand new. That, that was bringing in this new style of Christian music and worship music. So the movie I enjoyed so much. I really enjoyed the Jesus music movie. It's a, it's a wonderful documentary. It's not just people who were a part of CCM, Contemporary Christian Music. It's not just them talking into the camera, it's that, but it's also news footage and reenact reenactments of those times. There's a similar documentary about the career of Alice Cooper, who's my favorite rock star and a Christian, by the way. It's called Super Duper Alice Cooper. And that documentary, Super Duper Alice Cooper, is much like the style of the Jesus Music documentary. Both show dramatic reenactments of those time periods that they're discussing. So you have someone like um, the DeGarmo and Key guys, or uh, Larry Norman's son, or somebody else who was an early on uh, Christian musician, you'll have them talking, and then you'll have some historical footage and some dramatic reenactments. So I really enjoyed the Jesus Music movie. If you're a Christian, I encourage you to watch that movie. Go into the cinema and watch it. If you're a lover of CCM, contemporary Christian music, I really encourage you to go out and see the Jesus Music documentary. If you're a fan of Newsboys, Matt Redman, Chris Tomlin, this movie will show you the history of what led up to those bands, including DC Talk and Petra and Striper. I mean, this documentary was very thorough. Now, I'm 50 years old, and I became a Christian when I was 17, back in 1988. So I went to my United Methodist Church and fell in love with that style of worship and hymns. But it really was CCM. It was contemporary Christian music that made me fall in love with that contemporary style of worship music. So I fell in love back in the 80s with Michael W. Smith, Amy Grant, Michael English, Larnell Harris, Sandy Patty, oh yes, Petra, Striper, Carmen. If you're familiar with these 
uh, if you're familiar with CCM, then I'm sure I'm rattling off names that you are familiar with. So uh, those artists get a lot of attention. Michael W. Smith and Amy Grant really get the most time in this movie, which makes sense because a lot of what they did was instrumental in the evolution of CCM and the the, the progress and the building of the uh, contemporary Christian music industry and the beginning of CCM magazine and all that. Uh, DeGarmo and Key is featured. Um, Striper gets lots of, of screen time in this movie. I loved hearing from Michael Sweet, the uh, main singer of Striper. By the way, Striper is still going strong that they're out there. Uh, John Cooper of Skillet gets some screen time. Uh, the lead singer of Newsboys, I believe his name is Michael Tate, who was also in DC Talk. He gets some good screen time, as does Toby Mac. And the, the history of DC Talk gets lots of screen time. And how DC Talk came together and they rose up in popularity and they kind of fell apart. And Toby Mac and Michael Tate and all of them uh, went their own ways to do their own solo careers. Um, that gets lots of screen time. Um, so I really enjoyed this movie very much. Like I said, if you are a fan of contemporary Christian music of any kind, I think you're gonna enjoy this movie. Later on in the movie, you hear about Chris Tomlin and Matt Redman and a little bit for um, Mercy Me, yes. And the relationship between Amy Grant and Mercy Me. And a lot of attention is given to the underbelly of CCM. All of the criticism that came out regarding Sandy Patty and her divorce and the um, situation around her divorce and all that. And attention is given to Amy Grant and her divorce, marrying Vince, Vince Gill, who also went through a divorce at that time. And all of the media scrutiny against Vince Gill and Amy Grant. And then, like I said, how Amy Grant came to tour with Mercy Me. And that in itself is a wonderful story. There are many wonderful stories about some of your favorite contemporary Christian artists. So I really highly recommend Jesus Music, the movie. Go out and see it. My only criticisms of the movie is this documentary really glossed over Carmen. Carmen Licadello was his full name, his first and last name. But uh, Carmen gets very little screen time. And I don't get that because in the 1980s and 90s, Carmen was uh, widely popular. He was extremely popular. I mean, I don't have the data in front of me, the, the numbers, but a lot of his albums and concerts were record-breaking. He had record-breaking concerts in certain parts of the world. He, he had record-breaking albums, you know, not all of them, but many of them were. And so, yeah, Carmen was right in there uh, when there was the Young Messiah tour, which if you are my age and you're a fan of CCM, you may recall back in the 80s and 90s, there was the uh, the, the Young Messiah tour concert. And that had Michael W. Smith, Amy Grant, Carmen, um, for him, Michael English, Larnell Harris, Twyla Harris, Sandy Patty. And so Carmen was right in there with them. But Carmen gets very little mention in this movie. Uh, Twyla Paris gets very little mention in this movie. That surprised me a great deal. Um, Petra, to me, got very little mention in this movie. And Striper gets lots of screen time. Maybe 
the members of Petra decided not to participate in this movie. I haven't read any articles online about the making of this movie, but maybe Petra band members de declined to participate in this documentary. I don't know. But uh, Striper gets lots of screen time. I mean, you hear about how Michael Sweet and his brother came to Jesus by watching a Jimmy Swaggart um, sermon online, on, not, not, not online, on TV. Michael Sweet and fellow band member and brother, those two got saved while watching Jimmy Swaggart on TV. And the, the movie shows how heartbroken they were when years later, Jimmy Swaggart, the preacher, who's still going today, he criticized Striper. He accused the band Striper of being demonic and satanic. And two of the band members who were brothers got saved by watching Jimmy Swaggart on TV. And Michael Sweet tells a story in this movie about how, har how heartbroken they were about that and how that was key in them taking a dark turn with their band and not being so Christian and, and not doing Christian music and making a, an, an album called Against the Law. And so Jimmy Swaggart, who was instrumental in leading these two sweet boys to get saved, Jimmy Swaggart was also instrumental and influential in disappointing Striper so much that they went down a dark path for a while and then broke up for a while, but then came back together again. So that was all real good stuff in the movie. That was all really good stuff, but I didn't understand why Striper got so much screen time in this movie and Petra is barely mentioned. I mean, Petra is older. Petra is the, has to be, the, 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 the longest running Christian rock band ever. They were before Striper. Petra was before Striper and Petra is still going in certain forms. They retired at one point. I think but they're still touring and Petra was very much influential in contemporary Christian music. Petra showed that you can be a Christian rock group and not be so much flashy like Striper was. Striper band members wore these very uh, flashy yellow and black costumes with the long Bon Jovi hair, which was cool, but Petra was different. Petra, the, the Petra band members looked like everyday guys, but they rocked for Jesus. So I was surprised. Petra has their own great, you know, credentials and accomplishments in CCM. So I don't get why this movie didn't give hardly any attention to Petra. Maybe they wanted to focus more on the, the, the mainstream Christian pop music like Amy Grant and B.B. and C.C. Winans. I don't know. But um, anyway, still a good movie. But, but why the documentary glossed over Petra and Carmen? Again, Carmen had record-breaking uh, contemporary Christian music concerts and albums. And it's almost as if Carmen is the, the black sheep of uh, contemporary Christian music. I did on this channel a whole video about Carmen Licadello when he passed away. Carmen died, I believe, last year, I think in 2020. And I was and, and still am a huge fan of Carmen and his music. And I was sad that he died because he beat cancer and he got married and he was looking forward to touring again and he died and not of cancer. So that was very sad. And I was very dis disappointed in an article about Carmen after his death by Christianity Today. Anyway, if you want to watch that video, you can find that video here on my channel. But um, I don't know why 
Carmen is almost like the black sheep of CCM. Um, yeah, his videos and his song lyrics were more theatrical and dramatic. You know, Satan bite the dust. In fact, there's a, an excerpt from the Satan bite the dust video that is in the very end of this Jesus music documentary. And by putting at the very end of the movie, just a, a brief excerpt of Carmen in his cowboy outfit, shooting down Satan in this cowboy motif. It's almost as if this movie was making fun of Carmen and saying like he was the, 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 the rodeo clown of CCM. And that's not fair because Carmen was as much an evangelist and a minister as he was a musician. And, you know, people can say what they want about Carmen and make fun of his videos and, and his movies and his song lyrics and say that he was kind of goofy or theatrical or dramatic. So what? People loved him. For a while, he only charged $4 for a concert ticket because he had to for, for fire marshal reasons. But he wanted people to come to his concerts for free. And he gave an altar call at every concert. So I really don't like that Carmen is kind of considered the, the class clown of CCM, the, the, the rodeo circus clown of CCM, you know, the black sheep of contemporary Christian music. That's not fair, you know. So, but other than that, other than glossing over Petra and... Uh, Carmen, uh, I really, really enjoyed the Jesus movie, uh, the Jesus music movie. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, there's somebody else, um, there's somebody else in the movie that got uh, great screen time. I can't think of his name right now, but uh, Gaither, Bill Gaither, that's his name. I was trying to look him up online. Bill Gaither gets lots of screen time too. So all these guys who talked in this movie were very interesting to talk to. They were very interesting to listen to, I should say. So two thumbs up for the Jesus music. If you're a Christian and you love worship music, if you're a Christian and you love uh, contemporary Christian music, then please go out and support the Jesus Music Movie. It's enjoyable, it's fun, it's worshipful. It may have you raising your hands right there in the theater. I know I did. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I'll be back with another video next week. And I will keep encouraging you with prayer and Bible teaching and inspirational messages. So if you have comments or prayer requests, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you and God bless.